I think they're accurate. Uh, I also think that there, that there is a possible upset in this first round, which is that it's entirely possible that Marine Le Pen will come first, even by half a point ahead of Emmanuel Macron in the results of this, this first day. We don't know yet. Uh, the big cities have not voted. We're not allowed to give specific poll estimates, and they are estimates at this stage. Uh, there's a much higher abstention uh, a rate that we see so far. Uh, but uh, it's you know it's a beautiful weather day. Uh, most poll um, uh, offices are uh, open until 7 p.m. Paris time or French time uh, in in any but the large cities like Paris, Lyon, Marseille, Bordeaux, etc. With a result that we don't really know, but she's strong. Uh, and and Emmanuel Macron, the tendency in the past few weeks for Emmanuel Macron has been essentially to lose ground. And he's also lost ground because uh, he decided that he was appearing such a statesman because of the Ukraine crisis, that it was better for him to say, I'm being presidential, the other are mere candidates. And it turns out that this may not help be, have been such a good strategy. Uh, I mean, how has uh, Marine Le Pen been able to uh, get so ahead in the polls? I mean, uh, several weeks ago when we covered uh, the elections on this show, uh, it was argued by many observers that you know, almost she's almost like a relic. And uh, Zamor was the one on the right that was uh, really making headway. But now in the last week or so, it seems to have completely turned around. How's this happened, do you think? It's very interesting because she has been very consistent in recent years in um, uh, uh, furthering uh, the whole strategy that was to what she called detoxify the natural rally. And first of all, you know the name. She changed it in 2018 from natural front to natural rally. And, and the whole idea was to look softer. And people said, oh, but, you know, in that case, people will vote for the normal soft candidate. It's, there's no there's no upside, upside in in trying to imitate the others. I think there's a combination of this succeeding not only on a political standpoint, uh, but also on a personal standpoint in which she recrafted her personality not to be scary. And it goes from many aspects of her personality, from essentially giving smaller rallies, admitting to mistakes, uh, 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 being confessional at times in interviews. I mean, when her niece Marion Le Pen, Marion Maréchal. Uh, joined Eric Zemmour, and she was asked by a journalist on, on, on French news, she said, look, I, it hurts me. Of course it hurts me. I half brought her up uh, uh, with, with, with uh, my sister. And, and yes, of course it hurts. And those things, the admission of weakness was something entirely new. And I will not say at all feminist, but certainly a more feminine way of looking at things. And it is entirely possible that after five years of Emmanuel Macron, the French want uh, uh, politicians with a, a little less ego. But then she benefits from an amazing circumstance, which is that the center-right candidate, Valérie Pécresse, who on paper looked so good that there were early polls giving her winning the second round, she's turned out to be so transparent that she's not believable and uh, she's not been helped by her own party, to be honest, but still, that was not good. And then Éric Zemmour made Marine Le Pen look moderate. Uh, if you look at both, uh, Eric Zemmour is much more sort of, you know, abrasive when he talks because he's a columnist and he still talks a bit like a columnist. If you look at the platforms, they're not far away and there are several aspects in which I think Marine Le Pen is more hardline. But it's, it, it helped her tremendously. Uh, and there's a sort of feeling and she, she appeals to the working class and there's a sort of feeling that uh, you know, she's hardworking and it's her turn. Uh, it's been a long time. She's 53. There's a kind of grudging respect and sometimes not so grudging respect. And she's waged a very good campaign. Now, the make or break moment is going to be sometime between the two rounds in which she has a debate with Emmanuel Macron because she flunked that one the last time five years ago disastrously. I mean, she was terrible. And if she's good on this debate, anything can happen. And, and, and just finally, very quickly, I mean, what, what are some of her policies then? You know, what, what specific things uh, do you, is she arguing that she will do um, that will improve the lives of, of, of French people? And why are those policies appealing to people? She wants to limit immigration to France to uh, uh, 
uh, 25% of what it is right now. She wants to limit benefits to French citizens. Uh, she has been talking about cost of living, and that was very, very important uh, at a time when suddenly we were hit by inflation. And uh, even though uh, economically, the way she sort of, you know, adds more benefits for the French and uh, um, take, uh, detracts tax from, from companies is sort of highly dubious from an economic point of view. She has softened her international stance. I mean, she went uh, to Moscow to shake hands with Putin. It's a picture that's been circulating quite a lot. Uh, but she, unlike Eric Zemmour, she stopped talking about this immediately. She immediately said she would take Ukrainian refugees, which he didn't, for instance. Um, and she also has sort of softened the idea. She doesn't want to get out of the the EU. She doesn't even want to get out of the euro. And she said it's the European bank, central bank that changed, not us, which may or may not be true. Probably is not true. Uh, but it's a combination of, you know, I'm not so hardline as you think. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and Elizabeth Mute, journalist and Telegraph columnist, thank you so much for sharing uh, your reaction and thoughts on the poll that puts Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron in the second round of voting in France very 